Amen. Good morning. And welcome to our service of worship. Glad to see each of you here today, especially want to welcome those visiting among us. Uh, please notice the announcements in your yellow sheet, but I'm just going to highlight a few. The May newsletter is on the Welcome Center this morning for you to pick up. We appreciate uh, Leona's work on that and everybody's help. Uh, Native American Ministries offering envelopes are in your bulletin today. Uh, and you can read about that. I had a personal experience with a uh, seminarian, uh, Tweedy Sombrero was in seminary with me at St. Paul School of Theology a couple of days ago. Uh, and she's now in ministry in Arizona uh, in a Native American church there. Uh, wonderful person of faith and, and uh, they just have a unique uh, perspective, I think, uh, in coming from their culture. It's just a wonderful thing. Uh, certainly want to encourage you to support scholarships and ministries that go on. I know they have a, uh, also a church here in Lincoln is a Native American uh, church. So uh, these are folks that, that come from, you know, the hardships of, if you can imagine another, all kinds of folks coming in on, on your land and taking it away from you, you know, and sending you off to live in another part of the country. I mean, they, they have, the stories that, that they tell are really difficult, but they are people of faith and many of them have come to know Christ, so we praise the Lord for that. Uh, the uh, baskets in front, just a reminder that, that they are for the pastor's discretionary fund if you come up for communion, if you'd like to, to give an offering to help people. Uh, mostly is for folks in our congregation that have special needs that they need help from time to time, you know, to, to get along. So uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, also, you may have noticed, and if you've been into Fellowship Hall there, that uh, the uh, trustees have been working on getting that painted, and I think it was Robert basically got that trim underneath the windows done, so we, we really appreciate that. And uh, they've been doing painting in my office as well, and I think they're gonna go all the way back to the back part also, aren't we, uh, Julie, back in the uh, uh, Friendship Parlor, we'll also get some paint. and. So uh, we do appreciate the trustees and the work that they do. Any other announcements? Need to be made this morning. Um, we're, we're excited about Vacation Bible School coming up June 22nd. Uh, so pass the word. I think that's the main thing. We wanna get the word out to uh, people even beyond our congregation, certainly, uh, that we're gonna have a great day uh, there going to be kind of a western theme this time and so it should be a lot of fun uh, so please stand and greet each other in friendship and in the peace of Christ
You ready? I wasn't on for a minute. <laughs> there we go. Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome to the celebration of the God of second chances. Welcome to the celebration of the God of hope and healing. Welcome to the celebration of the God of blinding love. Come and join us as we sing our praises. Praises to the great God of new, new tomorrows, tomorrows and forgiven and yesterdays. Praise. Amen. Please remain standing and join our opening hymn, Jesus Calls Us, verses 1 through 5. calls us o'er the tomb of our lives while restless sea day by day his sweet voice soundeth saying Christian follow me as of all the apostles heard it by the Galilean light, turn from home and toil and kindred, leaving all for his dear sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the be seated. Would the children come forward now for the children's time, please, as we sing Jesus Loves Me, the first verse. loves me yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so well today we're going to talk about love and how easy it is to say I love you in in I've got many languages here but one is uh, uh, American Sign Languages can can you do that Put these two fingers down and this one out like that. Can you make a I love you in sign language? It's kind of hard to do. Okay. <laughs> I love you. Um, or uh, in Arabic, ohiboke. Yeah? Okay. And uh, some of the German, now you'll forgive my, my accent. Ich liebe dich is in German, right? Um, how about Italian? Let's see, what does that say? Ti amo. Or, uh, amore, right? Okay. Uh, lots of ways to say 
uh, I love you. Uh, when you say I love you, do you mean it? And what do you mean when you say I love you? That's kind of a nice thing to say, but when you love somebody, what do you do about it? If you say I love you, mommy, what do you do? Do you pick up your toys when she asks you to? That would be one thing to do, right? I always pick up your toys. Always pick up your toys. Good job. And what else could you do for mommy to show that you love her? Or daddy or one of your family? What could you do? Or a friend? Hmm? Something nice, right? You do something nice for her? I yeah. eat some lunch. Okay. <laughs> Help them out. You, I'll bet you're good helpers, aren't you? Yeah, that's one way to show. Or give, oh, give them a hug, right? Can you give them a hug? Or do you like kisses? Yeah, that's a way to show your love. Jesus was talking to uh, Simon Peter in our scripture today. And he asked Peter, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? And he, Peter said, well, yeah, sure, I love you, Jesus. And but Jesus said things like, then take care of my lambs. Can you imagine trying to take care of a lamb? Do you know what a lamb is? Those little sheep that just run around. They're really fast. And they are always in trouble, right? Yeah. That's kind of hard to do. And then he said, again, do you love me? And he said, well, Jesus, you know I love you. And he said, then, okay, then tend my sheep. Tend those big ones, right? Bigger ones, the adult people. You know, the sheep that sometimes they run into water and drown or they, they flop on their backs because they're, he they're so heavy with wool and they can't get up. Got to take care of those sheep, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the third time he said, Peter, do you love me? And he was kind of almost grieved and sorry. He asked, had to ask him three times. But you know how many times Peter denied he ever knew Jesus? Do you, remember, do you know that story? He denied Jesus three times. He ever knew him before he was crucified. And so Jesus gave Peter three times to tell him, I love you. And then he said, feed my sheep. Yeah. Make sure they know my word. Make sure they know the message of Jesus. So um, Jesus wanted to make sure that Peter, and I think all of us, when we say we love someone, that we do something about it, right? Should we pray? Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for loving your children. Bless them as they seek to love you by showing people your love, by showing them kindness and doing really nice things for them in Jesus name. Amen. Got something special for you there as we sing some more, okay? All right. Right here. Okay. Right here. There we go. Yeah. Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, <clears throat> loves me. The Bible tells me so. I have a prayer concern for Lloyd Sadler, who's having hip replacement surgery Monday. So uh, keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Beth uh, Honan shared that. And Bob has a couple of joys. Um, it's today is their 29th wedding anniversary, right? Well, happy anniversary. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> and then Karen received a humanitarian award from Nebraska Saratoma Club on the 25th of April for her work with Lulu's 
Luntry and the homeless. That's very nice too. Very good. Tell her congrats for us. Yeah. I think those are the ones that uh, we have today. Let's uh, come to prayer. May the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful God, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly life and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Great loving God, we praise you, for we don't deserve your love, but you give it so freely. We thank you, Lord, for offering yourself for us, so we remember this Holy Communion Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for those who have sacrificed so we can know your love for us, so that we can sit here in these pews and be appreciated and appreciate your love and, and worship you today. Uh, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their lives for their friends. And we've had many who've laid down their lives so we could worship here. We continue to pray for our nation, for our leaders, and these troubled times, that uh, you would guide us we need you. We have no other hope than you. Uh, we, we pray for these we've lifted up before you, for Lloyd who's having surgery tomorrow, your, that you'd guide the surgeon's hand and, and this healing. Continue to pray for Jared. And we'd ask uh, your blessing on T and his parents, for uh, Leona and Gary as well. Lord, uh, thank you for Karen and her heart for homeless people in this community and great work she's doing there downtown with Lulu's. And I see her blessing on that ministry. For all our Native American ministries that are around. And, uh, we thank you for our wedding anniversary for Bob and Karen. We thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. 
As we think of God's love and Christ's love for us today, why don't we just accept, uh, find that in our hearts, and then find that in our hearts to say, "I will follow you, Lord." That I will get up and I and you can lead me where you call me, um, no matter what state we come in. We come to you. So if you'll please rise and join us in singing this morning. <coughs> Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. Trust in you alone, higher than my side, high above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. If this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you. Light into the world, light into my life. I will live.
Thank you, Praise Band, for sharing your music talents with us this morning. As we come to our time of giving with our tithes and offerings, just a reminder to sign your attendance pads that are located in your pews, if you haven't already. Amazed again by your resurrection from the dead, Lord Jesus, we come to give you praise by feeding your lambs and sheep with our offering today. Would the ushers please come forward at this time? Oh 
all creatures hear me. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise for the Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Great Shepherd of our souls, we dedicate these gifts to the upbuilding of believers and your great mission here and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you please be seated? First scripture reading this morning comes from Acts 9, verses 1 through 6. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. So ends the first scripture reading. I invite you to stand as you are able as we honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with the reading of the gospel from John chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you no fish? You have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and uh, hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them, and though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. May God bless this reading to our understanding. You may be seated. There was a story by Billy Rose, true story, uh, about a father and his son who were farmers. They, they were vegetable farmers and uh, it was important for them to get their vegetables to the city so they could set up a stand there to sell their vegetables to make a living. Um, so one day they filled the cart full of vegetables and started off toward the, toward the city. And the son, the younger boy, said, you know, uh, we need to get there quickly, Dad. And so he, he started, you know, whipping the ox and getting it going faster uh, toward the city. And the dad said, oh, no, no, we can take our time. We'll get there. Just, just be patient. Um, as they went along, uh, the boy got agitated. Uh, but the father kept finding things uh, to stop for, like uh, there was someone stuck along the side of the road. Uh, and they needed some help getting out of the ditch. And so he stopped and and helped him get out of the ditch. Yeah. And then he thought of his brother that he hadn't seen for quite a while. And so they stopped to see his brother and to talk with, with him. And <laughs> the little boy said, oh, come on, we gotta get to that stand. We gotta get there, Dad. We're not, we're not gonna get to the good place you know, so we can sell our vegetables. And then he, there was a fork in the road and uh, the left fork was a faster way to the city and the right fork was a more beautiful way. And of course, the father chose the more beautiful way and the son said, oh, dad, you just like flowers better than making money. And <laughs> dad said, you know, that's the best compliment I've gotten today. And he enjoyed the beautiful flowers uh, along the side of that road uh, on that way. Well, because of all their delays, uh, they needed to stop for the night. And they camped along the, the side of the road. And, and, but they got up early in the morning and they were going to try to get there quickly. But there was always something else uh, to do. Uh, and, and Dad noticed people along the way to stop and talk with and, and show concern for uh, here and there. Uh, well, they got to the top of the hill. Uh, it was about eight o'clock in the morning, and they heard the sound of, of sounded like thunder. And Dad thought, "Oh, well, there must be a big rainstorm in the city." And then it got dark. Uh, but when they got over the top of the hill, the sun uh, turned to his dad and. I, I know what you mean. And they, they turned their cart around and started back home from what had been the city of Hiroshima in August of 1945. Sometimes I think we get so busy, we forget to love, don't we? We get, forget to take time to show concern for people and for God's creation. Jesus said to Simon Peter, do you love me? Now, he didn't use, you know, that Peter the rock. He said, Simon, son of John, actually. 
would be, be like us saying, Simon Johnson. <laughs> Simon Johnson, do you love me? And his first word for love in Greek was agape, which is God's kind of love. Do you love me like God who sacrificed his life for you? And Peter responded, oh yes, Jesus, I philia you, which is brotherly love. Uh, but Jesus took that, okay. Uh, Simon, son of John, Simon Johnson, do you agape me? And uh, Peter said, well, sure, Jesus, I, I philia you, of course I do. I love you. And he said, okay, then feed my sheep. Which we, in the children's time, we remember. <laughs> Has anybody ever taken care of sheep here? Anybody raised sheep before? No? Well, they're, they're not very smart. Should we say that? <laughs> and they get in trouble a lot. Uh, and the, the first time he said to tend them because they needed tending. Uh, they, would, they would run into rushing water and die, you know, or they'd, they'd flop on their backs. And that's why they need, the shepherd needed that crook to get them back up on their feet. Uh, it took a lot of tending to take care of sheep. And so it is with the body of Christ, with, with all us sheep. We need a lot of tending from time to time. And so Jesus said a third time, Simon Johnson, and by this time he was pretty upset, you know, that he had asked him again. Here he is asking again, do you love me? And that, but the third time Jesus asked it in Greek, he said, philia. Uh, we well, kind of came down from his big throne, you know, uh, and, and came down to Peter's level. Uh, oh, brother, do you, do you love me as a brother? And Peter said, oh, you know I love you. You know everything. Then he said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Uh, he gave Peter something to do, right? To show his love for him. It wasn't just going to be a word. Uh, as Peter was usually pretty good at action, but when he got to the gate of Jerusalem, when Jesus was being tried, he said, I never knew you. I never knew him. Three times he denied, right? So three times Jesus asked Peter and gave him the opportunity to, uh, attend, you know, take care of those three times that he denied. I love you, Jesus, three times. Yeah. So I want to encourage you to love Jesus. Love Jesus more than just action. And I, I think that's, that's something that helps me uh, when I'm tempted uh, to just do my own thing or follow my own way. Um, or I, I, I'm tempted to, with that particular lust or particular uh, thing I just think I have to have, right? have to get to the market so I can make my money, right? But maybe there's somebody hurting along the way that needs my attention. Love Jesus more. And I, and I say that, and I, and, and I say that out loud. I love you, Jesus, more. And that helps me. And then I remember how much more Jesus loves me. And that's what we celebrate up here, right? with these symbols of Jesus suffering, how much more can a person love you than this? Huh? He who offered his life, he who suffered and died our death, he suffered our separation so that we could be united with the one who loves us more than we can imagine. So I wanna encourage you uh, today to love Jesus more than whatever temptation ever is causing you to not experience all of God's love. So I wanted to uh, close with a song, and maybe some of you know this one, but um, 
It's always meant uh, something special to me. Um, from the First Corinthians chapter 13. If I would speak with tongues a man and of angels if I would prophesy and understand all and if I have all faith so mountains may be removed and if I feed the poor and give up my life. If I have not charity, if love does not flow from me, I am nothing. Jesus, reduce me to love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not envious. Say, I get the right note here. There we go. Love is patient and kind. Love is not envious. Not proud, but gentle and meek. Seeks not its own way. Love sings when Jesus prevails. Believes and endures all things. Love hopes and bears every wrong. And love never fails. If I have not charity, if love does not flow from me, I am nothing. Jesus, reduce me to love. Jesus, reduce me to love. Jesus, reduce me to love. Oh, Lord, reduce us to love. Help us get our pride out of the way and ourselves out of the way so you can love through us. Help us notice the needs of people around us and do what we can to feed your lambs, to tend your lambs, your sheep, to show your love in real ways because you love us so much. Lord, thank you. And as we share in this meal we're about to, to partake in, we, we want to thank you and praise you. Uh, how can we thank you enough? for giving yourself uh, for us. Because sh you showed us what love is all about. Uh, you offered yourself for us. You poured out your life. You gave up your throne. You, you who could have sent 10,000 angels to protect yourself, instead you gave yourself up. So we remember how you took bread and you blessed it and broke it and gave it to your followers and said, this is my body that is broken for you. And you also took the, the cup after supper and you blessed it and gave it to your followers. And said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of this, all of you, in remembrance of of me. So then they remember Jesus' body broken and his blood poured out for us. So Lord, let this bread, this juice be for us, your body, your blood, that we might be for you, life for those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.
The table is prepared for all who desire to live a new life, to walk with him who gives us strength, who gives us love and power to love others. So I invite you to come as you feel led, as the ushers might help you up here as, as well. well. Take places around the, uh, the table here and kneel if you'd like or stand uh, if, if kneeling's hard, but kneel in your hearts and thank God for what he's, he's given us. So we'll, if the uh, servers would come, we'll prepare to serve you. All right. I think I'll have you stand now for the benediction. And now, dear Lord, send us forth, receiving your love and sharing your love, showing your love by serving others, by tending your lambs and, and feeding your sheep. Oh, Lord, we need your help to do that. So we pray in, in your precious name, and we go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.